everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. I'm a little bit hoarse today, so forgive me. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I, I don't know if it's this infection that I've been fighting or if I'm coming down with a cold. It's just season. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, if you could put up with me a little bit, my voice comes and goes. It could just be my umbrella injection because when I do that, sometimes I get a sore throat. So um, that was two days ago still dealing with it. But anyhow, I feel great. So, um, I have a confession to make. I lied. The other video, my last video, um, I said that I was going to do a haunted house for Tiny Tuesday tutorial. And I tried. I really, I really tried. In fact, I had pulled out a, an old Inktober book that I had done a haunted house on and I went to go redo it and I did this on video and um, it took It was well it was over an hour long just to do that because there's so much pen detail going on You know even in the trees. I've got detail and all of that stuff Now I could run that as a different video, but I can't do a tiny Tuesday tutorial when it's huge. So, so that's not going to work out. So I thought today maybe I'll do one in gouache, a fall landscape. Um, if you follow me over on Instagram and I invite you over on to Instagram at Sharon Cullen Art, I posted a ton of fall photos that I took when my husband and I were on the way home from church today. We stopped and took some short walks and I mean short walks I mean he just had a knee replacement although he's hiking through the woods right now to go hunting but um, we just went to this uh, old bridge this old steel bridge that's so pretty near us it's about five miles from our house if that and then the Port Crescent State Park is also just a couple miles from our house so we stopped there and walked around a little bit and I took some photos. I mean, I was in my church clothes, so I wasn't going to go hiking through the woods a whole lot, but, um, and now it's overcast and cloudy looking again. So we got a little window of opportunity because it's been raining for two weeks straight. I think our workers haven't even come back since last Wednesday. I think last Wednesday they were here. So hopefully they'll come tomorrow, but I don't know. So anyway, let's go on with Tiny Tuesday tutorial. I think I'm going to do this fall landscape in gouache, and we'll just see how it turns out. Okay, so to start out, I just put a circle down on my paper by using a cup, and then I started to draw in a fence at the bottom and a tree. I know it's kind of hard to see, I'll zoom in on it so that you can see it a little better. Okay, I'm actually starting with a little bit of watercolor and I'm putting on just some ultramarine blue into the sky. Uh, you can use gouache if you'd like. I had just originally planned to do this in watercolor and then changed my mind and decided to go with wash. So the first portion will be watercolor and then we'll go over it. Now after I fill in the sky area with the uh, ultramarine, I'm gonna go back with a paper towel and lift a little bit of cloud out and then also add some gray into the clouds as well. Just some Payne's gray is fine. Initially with the watercolor, I'm just going in with, I think, a number six uh, Kalinsky Sable brush. Later, I'll be using my 10 Precision Premium 10 King Art brush, I think it's called. And I think that is a number 10 round. It's a pointed round, though. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to the ground area. And um, that is basically just grass. Uh, I need to put my photo up for you guys here in the corner. I'm just putting that color in the background and later we will go in with gouache and add the final touches of grass. 
Really, I should have done that before I put the fence in, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time I'm because I'm still using some gray in for now, here. and I'll be going back in with the fence a couple times to do some shadowing and layering uh, as we go with the gouache. But right now, I'm still using watercolor. Now I've put a little bit of blue in the sky, which is going to get covered, so don't worry about doing that. I mean, in the tree area. We'll be going in with... Um, gouache, but I have a dark gray going in for the tree branches, and uh, you may want to put those in, but I do believe I go back over that with gouache as well. Now here I'm going in with some, uh, I think I used some quinacridone sienna uh, in here, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to tone it down a little bit, and I'm using that in different areas where the uh, trees are popping up here and there. You can see in the photo here. I'm also adding some of the brush in, some of the green grasses, and some of the leaves underneath the fence line here in the front. Um, all of this, some of it, most of it will show through with the gouache, but some of it I'll be going back in with gouache to add more to. And if you notice in the photo, as you notice in the photo, uh, I need to kind of squeeze this together so that I can get the tree on the far right in on the right hand of the circle. Uh, also the other tree on the left hand side on the left of the circle. So I'm just kind of squeezing it together. I'm just using a little bit of perlene green here for my pine tree. Use any dark green. We're going to be going in pretty quickly now with the gouache. Now I think I was assuming that the edge of the circle was taped so I went outside of my border there but maybe my tape bumps that area I'm not sure but even if it doesn't I kind of like the edge with a little bit of tree sticking out um, I can't remember if it did or not oh it looks like the tape comes pretty much up to that edge and now I'm going in with gouache I have some green some white some yellow uh, and I'm just mixing it together so that I can put some highlight onto that pine tree. Here I'm using Jeece Finest Gouache, J-E-E-C-E -E -E Finest, which can be found on Amazon. I will be doing a giveaway on that very soon, and I will talk to you about it. Now I'm going to go in with some, I'm grabbing some red uh, and some yellow, and I'll be mixing my orange up. I think I'll be using a little bit of burnt sienna in that as well and just kind of mixing my colors together. You can see I mixed an orange over there on the left and now I'm just dabbing it in on my tree, my first layer, and I'm letting some of that watercolor continue to show through. And then I'm gonna go back in with a little brighter color all the way up until I get to a golden color. I am using also some yellow ochre as well as that bright yellow that I used and now I'm making a brighter orange to go back in over the top of that layer. You can see here in the picture how the color varies on this tree from a real deep red orange to a brighter orange and then almost yellow on the tips. And then I'll go in with some burnt sienna in front of it for those other trees that are directly in front of that bright tree. Right now I've mixed a little bit of a dark brown so that I can go in and add more color to the fence post because it wasn't really a bright gray. 
and uh, then later I'm going to go in and add the lines in with darker color and shadow as well. Now here I've just added a little more burnt sienna to my palette. I just realized that I cropped the pine tree out of my photo when I put this picture up. There was a pine tree there that got squeezed together in for this picture, and it was on the left-hand side, but I cropped it out. Here's a photo with the pine tree in it, but it was just too large a photo to fit into the frame very well, so I cropped it out. Now here I added some lines onto the fence post to give them more of a 3D effect. Just adding more highlight of color onto the trees, brightening up the yellow a little bit in different areas, and uh, adding to the foreground bushes and small trees. And then I'm gonna go in finally for the grass and I will finish up the fence. adding a little sand from the road in front of the fence here. And then I will add some little grass patches to that as well. And uh, I'm finishing up the fence here now, adding a little bit of a lighter gray to the top, uh, darkening underneath with some darker gray brown. And then lastly, I go on with a little bit of white just on the tips of the top of the fence not too much. After I finish up these branches, then I'm just gonna let it dry for a bit, and then I will go back in and add some finishing touches to the trees. I wanted to put in some sky holes, so I'm going back in with a pale ultramarine and white mixture to put sky holes back into the trees, because as you see in the photo, the sky is showing through. There's a lot of holes in the trees. So as I finish this up, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Tiny Tuesday tutorial. Everybody have a great day, and remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, 
Be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.